free money from the Hobiko Law Firm. Call her five at seven three six zero one eight six right now. So um, yesterday, uh, two days ago's question. Two days ago, we had a question that was really, really tough. Some of these questions that pop up can be really difficult. Muhammad Ali's daughter is her name was uh, Layla, right? And uh, but he had nine children. So uh, the question had me reading off nine, all nine children. But I added one in there and you had to guess which one wasn't. Mm -hmm. That was a tough question. When I look back on that, the the one that wasn't was Rahman, R-A-H-M-A-N. And that's his brother, Ali. But he had nine kids, Layla, Rashida, Hannah, Assad, Miriam, Jamalia, Jamalia, Jamalia. Is what it is, I think. Uh, Kalia, Muhammad Jr., and Maya. Nine kids. It's a lot of Unique kids. names. The only one I really recognize in there is Muhammad. <laughs> um, but yeah, crazy. Huh? Do you ever, <clears throat> oh, maybe not, because, but I do this all the time. When I'm talking to my kids, I'm like, uh, uh, for, 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 what's your name? Can you imagine having nine kids? Nine kids and trying to remember Sometimes all of them. Sometimes I call yeah. my daughter yeah. the dog. You know, it's funny, though. I watched my wife in the beginning of the, of the school year and. Uh, you know, she's 20 kids, 21 kids, something like that. She remembers them And all. in the beginning, it's a little rough. It's a little rough. And then all of a sudden, she's got them all. And she remembers all those names. So I guess you figure it out, mm-hmm. you know. I, I'm as impressed with the, those teachers as I am with the, the waiter that comes to your table. And uh, there's no yeah. menu. And he reads off the entire menu at the top mm-hmm. of his head. And then, by the way, takes the entire order for a table of six. That's unbelievable. And gets it right. No, that's unbelievable. I was just going to say, for years, my grandmother has called me Joe Josh, Jeff, which is her son, my brother, and then me. Okay, she'll get there sooner or later. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. Uh, hey, Joe, uh, Josh, Jeff. Joe, Josh, Jeff. Uh, Joe, Josh, Jeff, Eric, and Alien. Good morning, Eric. How you doing? Doing good. How about yourself, Bill? Good. Let's win some money here. Uh, see how much we're playing for. This is Hobanka's oh. money. It's one, two, or three hundred dollars. We spin the wheel, and it's spinning right now as we speak here. What are we playing for with Mr. Depression? One hundred dollars. One hundred dollars <laughs> for Mr. Depression. Okay, here's your question, Eric. You ready? Yep. All right. This restaurant was sued in 2001 after it gave away a Toyota. Ready, go. Uh, uh, Denny. Denny. The younger Denny's. Anybody remember, by the way, anybody remember this happening? Because I know the story. I don't, I don't remember, remember the it. restaurant. I, I, we, when it, I. Was it Hooters? When I, it was Hooters. Yeah. You're absolutely right. When we had, uh, on one of the previous radio stations uh, I was on, we did that same contest and gave away a toy Yoda, Star uh, Wars theme. Oh, right, right, right. A right. toy Yoda. So all these people from Hooters, the Hooters national chain, thought they were getting, um, you know, they thought they were they were getting a Toyota. Yeah, I, it was an employee. <clears throat> there i believe yeah. and uh she had Bad. won the contest and sued and, and they sued. had to give her a yeah. car they gave her a car all right eric here's what i want to do for you um i'd like to give you your choice um your choice of chubby checker tickets of uh, uh, the two tickets a pair of tickets to this weekend's beer event which is the new york state craft brewers event at the at the brewery um and this is going to be a great day saturday from four till eight o'clock 50 breweries will be there or we'll give you dinner for two from Carmelo's. It's your choice. Um, I'm going to be working this weekend, so how about uh, dinner for two? Dinner for two it is. Sit tight. Andrew's going to hook you up, all right? Thank you. All right, Eric. Thanks. And Eric in, uh, in Ilian. And Eric, just remember to boil your water. Boil that stinking water. Um, whenever i, I got to tell you, it never fails. Whenever we have a boil water order at mm-hmm. our house, mm-hmm. I have to put, because there are many places where you can drink water. Yeah. All right, in your house, think about it. How many different places where you can you can put a cup under there and bring out some water? Right. I have to put sticky notes because you get into a mode, and it's it never fails. The first thing I do, and it's always on a day where I'm really, really thirsty or feeling a little dehydrated. I'm like, you know what? It would be good if I drank a lot of water here. And uh, and you're just consuming the water, and it's, uh, it's boiled water. And then you have to say to yourself, well, nothing's going to happen, really. And then by that night, you're spending time um, <clears throat> in the other yeah. room where you could find some water. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, Bernie Sanders. There was a change last night in Bernie Sanders. Um, he is going to continue to fight on, but the word Democratic nomination 
was removed from his speech. Now, yesterday during the day, he was hammering away, we're going to fight for this nomination. But last night, that disappeared. And he said, we're going to stay in it and we're going to fight for the whatever he's talking about, the, you know, the, the, the communists in America or something, whatever he says. I don't know what he says. The people who think everything should be free. Um, I, I think that... Um, for economic and social justice, yes, something like that's that. I can't all remember that the exact crap. Word. And, you know, the, the sad thing is, is there's some stuff there that's probably legitimate. I mean, there is a widening gap between the middle class and the wealthy. And it's, a, and it's wider than it's, than it's ever been, at least in, in, in our times. So uh, how do you how do you fix that? I guess you fix it with opportunity, and you know Republicans will say you fix it with tax cuts. You cut taxes, and everything's going to work out. Uh, business will flourish. Employees will uh, will make more money. All of that will happen. But at the end of the day, there probably are some issues out there. The problem is that it's this. Th- this is the perfect time for Bernie Sanders because of these millennials, and it is the and and whose fault is that, by the way? The millennials, it's it's the, the, my generation. We're bringing up these kids to think that every time you go out on the field, it's going to end in a, in a positive way. Every time you get in trouble, we're going to come to school and we're going to fight. Every time something happens, every time you need something, you're going to get it. So they get out of college and they're like, well, where's all the stuff I used to get? And here comes Bernie Sanders, who's Santa Claus. How do, and, and the question would be, how does Hillary bring that back from where Bernie Sanders has, has placed it? I don't know how she can. I think that it's, you know, you think of her, she was always a very moderate Democrat. I don't know that she can be that moderate Democrat. She might have to move over to the left a little bit to satisfy Bernie Sanders. I don't You know, you hearken back to, I would say, the 80s when everybody was pro-America, pro, you know, fighting for the underdog. <clears throat> and injustice was really thought of as something that didn't occur very much yeah today it's we're all a victim of injustice yeah. we all must fight all the time and i think that's one of the you know things that motivates millennials yeah i i'm not i i, I do think there are things and there were things that were unjust back then and there were things that were just like probably today but um what was missing was the kid who got out of high school and was working three or four jobs right who, who didn't want it handed who who was excited about you know, I don't know how anybody else is, but I'm, you know, don't take away. Yeah, I, I could do better. Um, you, you could you could you could legislate me to a position where I'm making more money. But I don't want that. I want the American dream. Isn't that what we were brought up to believe? Don't give me this because I want way up here. I can achieve that. I know I can do that. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, is missing. It's like, hey, if, as long as we're and it is, it's a socialist mentality and it is, that's why these millennials seem to flock to this guy who looks like he's 110 years old and, and literally is hunched over. They, they love him because he's, he's Santa Claus. It's crazy. Um, and it set up a really difficult position for, for the Democrats yesterday. And, and even with Hillary, I know this bothers Christine a little bit, but the big thing yesterday, everybody talking, and even the New York Post, which is normally critical of Hillary Clinton, uh, praising her as the first female to ever win a nomination of a major party. And it is a big deal. And I, I think it, it, that is a big deal. But, you know, it was a big deal that Barack Obama was the first African-American. It was a big deal. And to vote for someone just because they that he or she is a male or female, you know, we got a tweet yesterday. I don't think night. that there's a there's, there's a difference between voting for someone because they're a, they're black or because they're a woman or because they're Jewish or whatever you would uh, you would vote there's a big difference between that and celebrating the fact that finally in America there is a woman that has been nominated i think right. they're two different things Absolutely. the problem is they're going to try to blur the lines and suck people in they are and i think yeah. some people are voting for her strictly sure. because she is a woman yeah. just the same way as some people are voting for donald trump because yeah. he's a white man um, we did get a, a tweet last night from frederick fiola on twitter saying this was for, funny this was a funny tweet yeah he said voting for hillary clinton just because she's a woman is like drinking antifreeze because it looks like Kool-Aid um, and by the way, um, animals will do that. So uh, be careful leaving that antifreeze out. It looks yes. nice and actually has a sweet smell to it mm-hmm. uh, for the animal. Uh, that story of the former Utica woman who's been charged in the death. Uh, I, you, I, I was watching press conferences and court appearances yesterday. The, the, the two twins, they were from here and I believe graduated. 
from Notre Dame is where they uh, they graduated from. They born in Utica, went to New Hartford for a time, and then moved on to Notre Dame, where they ended up graduating high school. Uh, the two of them, and there was an interesting thing said yesterday on the Hawaiian Report. There was a report out of a TV station in Hawaii that I watched online, and and they thought that the one twin. Um, was remember these are the ones that drove off the cliff. We had the story yesterday. I thought the one twin was trying to flee the country. She was in Hawaii. Turns out that uh, she says she was going back to her her sister's funeral, and in New York. And I wonder if that funeral is going to be held is going to be held here. Um, they only said New York, but uh, when New York has been referenced through this entire story, it's meant Utica and the and the Mohawk Valley region. So. Uh, crazy, terrible story, but, uh, but a, a really surreal story if you dig into it. Coming up, Peter Franklin, the Gabby Cabot. We're going to speak with uh, Peter from New York, live from New York, coming up.